Good evening, and welcome to the Television Graveyard. We are your TV necromancers, Laura Prince and Noel Houlihan. We have come here tonight to examine the spirits of past television shows, to find out what ones could be resurrected, should be resurrected, and which ones should just stay doomed. This will be a podcast in which we analyze the history, the hype, and the aftermath of shows that ran only one season, some only one episode. This month, we are exhuming The Game Show. With me, as always, is Noah Houlihan. If you think I'm not drinking, then you don't know Jack! This week, we're doing You Don't Know Jack, the very short-lived game show that ran on ABC for one, less than one season, for about six episodes, in 2001. Why are you throwing very at it? It, it ran about as long as a lot of the things we watch here on this show. <laughs> I know, but for uh, it feels shorter because game shows are shorter. Yeah, okay. Than a lot of the things we watch. All right, yeah. And this is, of course, uh, based off of the hit video game Jackbox. Back when it was just called "You Don't Know Jack" on your computer, and you didn't use a fancy telephone to play it; you used a keyboard. Yeah, I mean, the You Don't Know Jack franchise, I did a little bit of research. It goes back. Yes, and I was addicted. Yeah, I I love You Don't Know Jack. I I had the first four games on PC, plus You Don't Know Jack movies, TV, and sports. Oh my god, that sounds so fun. Yes, they were all amazing. I love playing You Don't Know Jack. Um, Nobody plays You Don't Know Jack with me. Very often anymore. I I will play it right now. Okay. I lost it, you don't know Jack! I, uh, Jack Attack is a game breaker. Yes, it is. And I'm also very good at Jack Attack. In any case, the, the video game is fantastic. I've always loved it. And this was their attempt of turning it into a game show. Because if you don't know... Uh, you don't know Jack. Then you don't know Jack! Literally! The, the conceit is, it is a game show. Like, the way that the games start on the PC are, alright, go in five minutes. Oh, we don't know the contestants' names. Type your name in now. And then you would type your name in. They'd be like, okay, do you need to know the rules? Because we're going live in two. Alright, here are the rules real quick. Alright, three, two... And that's why all of the games end with, like, credits and commercials. And it's funny, because it's kind of presented as being the home game of an imaginary game show. Yeah. Because you know how, like, in especially in the 90s and before, if you lost at a game show, you won a consolation prize, a copy of the home game. Mm-hmm. Uh, you Don't Know Jack ran about six episodes, and they're, they're available on YouTube. They feel astonishingly short. Like, some of the shows we've watched... Think about it. Good Family was 13 half-hour episodes, and it took us nearly two weeks to watch. Yeah, it was a miserable experience. This was six half-hour episodes, and we flew through it in yeah. an evening. Yeah, we watched all of them back-to-back. Uh, so th- this brings up the interesting uh, conundrum that we're in here. Is uh, This is the first time we've done game shows. And the way we've uh, distinguished this, just so you know as the listener at home... A reality show is a contest in which the same characters or same contestants appear in multiple episodes. A game show has new contestants every episode. So that's how we're distinguishing the difference between the two plots here. Yeah. And this does come with the problem in it doesn't make a lot of sense for us to go through this Episode by episode. Absolutely not. So what I propose we do is we go through it segment by segment and yes. explain what they do in each episode. Okay. All right. Sounds like a plan. So let's get started with our host, Troy Stevens, played by <laughs> Paul, Paul Rubens, Rubens, who you know better as Pee Wee Herman. So yes, Paul Rubens, this was 2001. So this was um, part of Paul Rubin's kind of comeback tour. Yes. When when is this in comparison to Mystery Men? Uh, This is actually about this, if I recall correctly, and I'm looking it up on IMDb as well, uh, it's the same year as Mystery Men. 
Okay, that makes sense. Also, I want to point out that everything Paul Rubens is known for is Pee Wee Herman related. Yeah. Like... Unknown for, for IMDb, friends. You don't say. Like, his movies used to be credited to himself. Like, Fair. he was never... He never went by Paul Rubens. He always went by Pee Wee Herman. Yeah, I guess... Because I'm also thinking of, like... Uh, I think of Nightmare for Christmas. I always think of that as being a big role for him. He was in Nightmare for Christmas? Yes. He was Locke. Oh, I did not know that. He's the one that looks like the little devil. Oh. I say that we take a cannon, aim it at his door, and then knock three times, and when he answers, Santa Claus will be no more. Oh. He was also in Blow. He was. This was... Okay, so Mr. Man <laughs> was 99. Uh, Blow was part of his, like, comeback tour. Blow, Mystery Men. And you know when that's your comeback tour, uh, not doing super yeah. great. Uh, he did a lot of voice work as well. Um, yeah, let's get back to you okay. on the Jack. So in any case, Paul Rubens is our host. Yes. Uh, but I'm not sure if you picked up on this. Each episode starts with a cold open yes. of some sort. It seems to me that they were not sure if he was a character or not. If he was going to be Paul Rubens or if he was going to be Troy Stevens. By that, by they, do you mean the producers when they were filming the cold opens or do you mean the contestants? I mean everyone involved in the show. Okay. Because the opening scene that we get for the first time we ever see You Don't Know Jack is Regis Philbin. Yes. He's sitting in Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, which is, you know, huge at the time. Yeah, that's the big thing in 2001. And he's like, our friends at AT AT&T are going to make us, or give us a free collect call. And he calls uh, the host of You Don't Know Jack to give him some pointers because he's the new guy. Good friends at the phone company are connecting me to another free long distance call. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. I'm sorry, that's... Hello? Hi, it's Regis Philbin. Regis? Wow, what am I, somebody's lifeline? No, Paul, I'm just calling to welcome you to the wonderful world of game shows and to pass along a couple of pointers. Right. So the first thing that we see on this show is Regis Philbin going, Hi, Paul. Yeah. Which seems to be a huge oversight. If the whole bit is Paul Rubens is Troy Stevens. Yeah, I, I'm i not sure why they did that. I think it's a mistake. Yeah, I think it's either I, a mistake or the idea that it was going to be uh, Troy Stevens was something that they decided later. Okay. Because in this cold open, it's just Regis giving advice to uh, Paul because it's his first time hosting a game show and he's like you know make sure you smile make sure you know you give away a lot of money oh the next thing you're gonna tell me i should dress nice and have a lot of banter yeah dress nice and have a lot of banter yeah paul rubens is snarky and funny and paul rubens is excited about telling people they're wrong yes he's the he's practicing you know saying i'm sorry that's incorrect however the next episode of you don't know jack starts with Paul Rubens looking to camera and saying, Hi, I, my name is Troy Stevens, and this is You Don't Know Jack, and throwing knives at someone, like, spinning on a board, like, doing the, the carny act. Yeah. So it's very confusing to be like, since we see backstage of the show. Yes. Being like, oh, is the whole bit this is Paul Rubens playing Troy Stevens, or is he Troy Stevens? And the opening credits, it starts with, You Don't Know Jack, starring Paul Rubens as Troy Stevens. Yeah, I I almost wonder if that's part of the, like, a lot of the show feels like it's slightly misaimed jokes. Okay. And I wonder if that's, like, a joke that didn't quite land, that the joke was, they got this highly recognizable character actor. actor yeah. Who is iconic in a certain role. And then they're like, well, he's gonna play this character... Who is not iconic, and like they're gonna strip Paul Rubens of the Pee Wee mannerisms mm-hmm. and just kind of have him be the darker, creepier side of Paul Rubens. Because Troy Stevens is sketchy and gross. Yes. He's, uh, what was it? Smarmy. I think it would have worked better if they never told the audience that it was Paul Rubens. 
And we, as the audience, just kind of sat there going, man, this Troy Stevens guy is weird, but so familiar. Yeah. Just so everyone watching eventually has that moment and go, wait a minute, that's Pee Wee effing Hermie. Yeah, I can see that. Uh, he's wearing, like, a deeply terrible wig. Yes, he's he looks like the spleen. Yes. Oh, God, I hope that wasn't Mr. what his Man. hair looked like. That might just be his head. Oh, no. No, yeah. that has to be a wig. I, I don't know. You're the research department. I didn't look up whether that was a bad wig. I, I think that's a, what you want to Google. <laughs> this is what the research department is. <laughs> what you want to Google is, was that his real hair in Mystery Men? Because if the answer is yes to that, it's, it's yes here. Because I would totally believe, because we never actually said what the scandal was, uh, Pee Wee Herman was caught touching himself in an adult movie theater. Oh no, I think that was his real hair. Yes. Oh no. But think about it this way. Paul Rubens was caught touching himself in a, a movie theater. Yes. And, you know, that was humiliating. Right. And people knew him as Pee Wee Herman only. It would be wise for him to separate his look and his name yes. from Pee Wee Herman if he's going to make a comeback. That makes sense. I I can't get over how, like, quaint his scandal feels in 2018. Yeah. Like... He did the thing you do at porn, porn, pornography. What do you What do you know? Like in 2018, I'm like, oh, he just he touched himself. Yeah, <laughs> what a novel concept. Like, I it's I, you can tell how like horribly desensitized we become that like that on it's still bad, mm-hmm. but on the sliding scale, you're like not as bad as some people, I guess. Yes. Um. So, the the cold opens we get are him and Regis, mm-hmm. and then uh, we have him throwing knives. That one really doesn't go anywhere. Yes. Uh, we have him arm wrestling a woman. Yes. And uh, we have... The model, I believe. Yes, he's arm wrestling a model. Uh, we The ha- model. The, like, the Jackie, who's, like, the Barker's beauty. Yes. It's always the same blonde model. No, he's... In show. He's Not arm in... wrestling a redhead. Huh. Okay. <laughs> he was arm wrestling someone else. And the the big cold open that matters is there's one where he is given a ring by a dying woman. Yes. Six, eight, ten. Troy Stevens, you are the chosen one. The golden host. Wear this ring. It will determine your fortune, your destiny. Wow. Thanks, creepy old hag. How can I ever repay you? Live. Oh, my God. I know. Isn't it fabulous? But, Mr. Stevens, what if the ring is cursed? Oh, come on. If you think I believe any of that mumbo-jumbo, then you don't know Jack. (laughs) And it always ends with him saying, uh... If you think, you know... If you think X, then you don't know Jack. You don't know Jack. Like, he gets attacked... And then the one with the ring actually has a through line through yeah, the whole episode. Let's go ahead and discuss the ring, just because it makes more sense to do it in full context. Yeah. After he gets the ring, things start happening. Yeah. As if uh, a light would fall and just nearly miss him. Yeah, a light fell right on where he was standing, and yes. he, like, looks behind him. And, like, shows the ring and, like, this musical sting would play Ah! to show that, like, something suspicious is happening. And then uh, ninjas attack him and he has to beat up the ninjas. Yeah, and then, like, you know, whoever came out to help him with one of the questions is, like, chloroformed by ninjas on a commercial break. Other people are injured and it ends with the ninjas attacking him. And saying, just take the ring, just take it. He gives up the ring, looks to camera and says, if you think that was the real ring, then you don't know Jack. And he puts the ring on. Yes. This was really funny and really well done. To have a game show with a plot throughout and is they, a very interesting concept. They do a good job of not... It doesn't interfere with gameplay. It really only happens when... Uh, they're about to go to commercial or coming back from commercial. Right. Which I, is a good way to do it, because I think 
there are legal issues about having it interfere with gameplay. Yes, and we're going to get to that in a moment. Yes. But no other episode does the complete through line like that Mm -mm. the whole time. And it's a little disappointing because they do it masterfully in this one. Yes, they do. Where everything has a nice theme. It, you know, you care about the game and care about a plot. Yes. Like, th- this is done very, very well. And this is something that the games did. There's a, a great, because it's broken up into episodes when you play it, mm-hmm. where it's all about alcohol. And as you play, the host gets drunker and drunker. Okay. And that's just part of the gameplay. So this episode, to me, feels the most like You Don't Know Jack. Yes, okay, definitely. The other, like, just cold opens, like, it just felt like they didn't put enough work in. And this is going to be something I say a lot. I they agree. They didn't just put enough care into it. So let, let's now get into the start of the, the actual show. After the, because the, it takes a long time, like we're doing right now, to get to trivia. Yes. Because after the theme song, out comes Troy Stevens and says, Here's Troy Stevens! Thank you! Thank you! Hey! Thank you! Thank you, thank you, thank you! And to those of you at home, hello. <laughs> nice outfit. Who shot the couch? Which is a good bit yeah. every time. That he's smarmy. Yeah. However, after that, it is always... We have three contestants. Let's cheat them. I mean, let's meet them now. It is totally wasteful to do that joke every single time. I agree. And then he steps off of a step, does a pose, and a treadmill carries him to his uh, podium. Podium. It is totally wasteful to do that every time. He also does the same bit about how they're real contestants uh, playing for real money. The only thing, the only thing fake is me. The only thing illegitimate is me. And he does that joke every single time with a slight variant as well. Yes. I feel like that's more important because as someone watching this. It is a disclaimer affair. If he didn't say that, I would not think this was a real game show. Okay. Because, like, there is so much wackiness and insanity to the idea that, like, these people are legitimately trying to win money seems insane. Because with the video game, you don't actually win money. It's just a fun time to spend with some friends. Well, yes. Like, with actual money on the line, it's frustrating. Yeah. And there's one or two people that don't seem like they're in on the joke. That are not real happy to be there. Yeah, I mean, this is a thing that's fun to watch in any early episode of a game show. Mm -hmm. Uh, Any game show that is not established yet. It's always fun to watch contestants get frustrated and get irritated because they... If the show hasn't been... hasn't aired yet, there's no way a contestant knows what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Like, if I go on Jeopardy tomorrow, I know what Jeopardy looks like. Mm -hmm. If I go on Quizzical, a wacky new game show, I have no idea what I'm in for. And a few of the contestants clearly have never played a You Don't Know Jack game, have no idea what's happening, and are not here for it. Yeah. Teen comes to mind. Yes. There's there's two contestants I think we need to talk about a little bit. Mm Mm-hmm. One is the ventriloquist. Okay. There is a ventriloquist on the show, and, you know, the idea is kind of Troy Stevens asks you your name and then, like, jabs at you about an interesting fact about you. Yeah. Like a very clearly leading the witness. And Troy Stevens talks to this ventriloquist and says, ooh, could you pull out your dummy and do a little bit of your bit? And he goes, no, I left the dummy at home. And he goes, ooh, let's take a look at that now. And they cut to... This dummy in bed with his wife, supposedly? Yeah. (laughs) And she's like, ooh, sorry, honey. And this dude is not big on this at all. (laughs) No, like, there were only, in six episodes, there were only three truly memorable contestants. That guy, Mm -hmm. uh, there's one lady who was just not here for any of it and is visibly irritated by the entire proceedings. Yes. And one girl who was tailor-made for the show. 
Mm-hmm. She, like, fell on a fence? I, I have trivia. Ooh, do you? Mm-hmm. This woman uh, was hanging up a poster in her, uh, her room. And uh, I believe it's not brought up in the show. But I believe it's a Smash Mouth poster. Yes! And she puts up this thing and she... Hey, Troy. Our first contestant is Danielle. Hello, Danielle. Hi, Troy. You're famous because you were impaled on a fence. Would you tell me about that? Uh, I fell out of a window hanging up a poster and I got stuck upside down with two six-inch spikes up either side of my butt. <laughs> wow, so you now have three holes in your butt. Yes, I do. That is what we call around here a bowling butt. <laughs> Which is my favorite joke. I know this woman, though. What? Uh, not personally. Oh. Uh, she appeared on uh, Real TV, I believe. Also, I wanted to find this other game show and not tell you this, but I couldn't find it. There was a game show that ran one episode called While You Were Away. Mm-hmm. Where they would take people uh, and sequester them for a week. And then ask you trivia questions about what happened this week in the news. Could, oh, that needs to come back for 2018. Yeah, wouldn't Could that you be great? imagine that show in 2018? And on the one episode that aired, the final question was, we have this woman here. She's the story of the week. Guess what happened to her? And it's her. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> so when I was watching You Don't Know Jack, I was like, hey... That's the girl from the other show. And she also, uh, she can stick her whole fist into her mouth. She's like yes. tailor-made for the show. Exactly, exactly. And she's having fun. She tried to get on the gong show and they were like, we have an, a better thing for you. Okay. <laughs> like, she's clearly, she's notable because she's very tonally consistent with the show. It's, I know, you know, when we started this sh- podcast, we talked about reaching out to people and having interviews after we've covered shows. Yeah. We need to do that again, because I want to talk to this woman. I have questions. Uh, So we meet our contestants, and then we move into trivia. Yes. The first questions are worth $1,000. And usually the first question asked is pointless. It's a very listen to the wording Uh, question. Because I think the very first question ever asked on You Don't Know Jack is... What is the name of the person who buzzed in? Yeah. Yeah, so it's... This is why it's important to be like, yes, this is a real game show. It's one of those... It's like the quiz your teacher gives you, where it's like, read all the instructions. Yeah. Before you start, and then, like, question number 16 is like, don't do anything. Yeah, at the end it says, now that you've read all the questions, uh, put your name at the top and don't fill anything in. Uh, And then... They try to incorporate some show stuff, or f- some video game stuff, because every episode has the dis or dat. And I realized I don't like his delivery of that, because I always hear Cookie going, it's a dis or dat. Yes. And uh, Cookie is also a thing that's used oddly. Co- yeah, the announcer is Cookie Master- Masterson from the show. From the games, yes. Yeah, or from the, yeah, from the video games. And I will say, because I watched this live when it when it aired, uh, I was very upset that we didn't see the other hosts from the games. Okay. Because my favorite host is Smitty. Oh, uh, Smitty! Yeah, I love Smitty, who is also, if you're playing the new Jack in the uh, the new Jack box, he's the host of Patently Stupid. Uh, there was another one named Guy Towers, who seems to have completely vanished, from what I understand. Uh, and there was always an old man. The fact that old man doesn't show up in this show at all is very disappointing. Yeah, I can... I Cookie is one of those things where I think the tonal difference between the games and the uh, the TV show come most strikingly. Because mm-hmm. the TV show feels like it's wacky for wacky's sake. Yes. The game show was... Uh, I'm trying to think of how to put this... It's Gene Wilder as Willy Wonka. It's just off enough to be fun. Okay. Like, it's it's kind of plays your expectations straight and then circumvents them just enough. Mm-hmm. Like, 
the wrong answer of the game and how there's one wrong answer that actually yes. gets you more points than anything. Th- this is more of a Mel Brooks project. Mm-hmm. Where Mel Brooks likes to push something until it's not a movie anymore. Right. And then we're like, nah, we're just kidding, come back. We're like, wait, there was a whole part where you just were on the set for the wrong movie, whatever, okay. Yeah, ninjas just attacked Paul Rubens? Yep, nope, whatever, let's go. So there's the dis or dat. Um, yeah, the dis or dat, which is... And they're always is, fun. And I, I kind of forgot the brilliance of this, which is the dis or dat is either clever wordplay mm-hmm. or basically you're given two categories. Barney and Satan. Barney and Satan. That was one they used. And I'm going to tell you a fact. You tell me if it's true about Barney, true about Satan, or both. Yes. Uh, so, you know, uh, usually red, uh, Satan, you, uh, is depicted with a tail. Oh, that's both. And it's fun to kind of have... You know, oh, this is similar things about uh, Barney and Satan. Uh, Possessed by a man named Eric. Barney. No, Barney, because that's who's in the costume. That's who's in the suit, that's right. Yeah, things like that are very clever. But there's a very good one. This next number, I hope you enjoy it. It's one of my personal favorites. I like to call it... This or that? Here's how we play. You're going to see a series of phrases, and for each one you need to tell me whether it refers to the vegetable known as a pea or to Winnie the Pooh. Get it right, win a thousand, get it wrong, lose a thousand. Here we go. Pea or poo? <laughs> Can appear green and mushy. Desolate. Pea! Pea is correct. Sometimes mixed with corn. Danielle. Pea. Pea is correct. So it's it makes grown people yell pea, poo. And, but... All the facts make you want to say the wrong thing. Because it's like, uh, can be in a solid or liquid form. Peas. Uh, Usually yellow. Poo. Yeah. Uh, So, you know, usually has corn in it. Peas. Like, it it was a very good joke. And the idea of trivia as comedy is something that's... I can't think of anyone else that does this. Hangs out with an ass. Poo. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, it's very so funny. so good. It's very well done. And it's a very weird skill to be able to do trivia as comedy. And they nail it at this part. It's a uniquely entertaining yes. aspect to the game show. That it's not just yelling trivia. It's, you know, oh, there are a lot of thought put into these questions. Mm-hmm. And, like, we write a game show. And I respect how difficult it is. It is very hard to write questions. To write questions, especially writing questions on a level that is that interesting. Yes. Is it interesting? Is it fair? And is it doable? Is like three factors you have to constantly juggle. And they do a very good job in this. Uh, When I write questions, they're interesting and fair, but not necessarily doable. Not necessarily doable. And uh, this brings us to where fair goes out the window. And every episode has a two million dollar question. It round two starts the same way as round one does, where there are a few trivia questions and the amount is doubled. Mm-hmm. But as round one ends with the dis or dat, round two ends with the two million dollar question. Yes, and this is a question worth two million dollars. But uh, as soon as he starts speaking, the dollars tick away. So yes. you only get what is left when he, by the time you answer. And every time he starts to read... Something happens. Something insane happens. Like a fan kicks on and blows the card away, and then he's chasing it around the studio. He's chasing it around. Uh, It gets stolen by a Jack Russell Terrier at one point. Uh, There's one where it falls on through the treadmill and then gets sucked underneath. And when Troy Stevens grabs it, his arm stretches out really, really long. Uh, Which is very cartoony and silly. And there's then, one where he's just pretending to cough. Like, there's one where he's uh, more leaning into him not wanting to give away the money, which is a character trait he does have throughout it. Is He's like, eh, eh. so when this... Eh, rah, rah. Well, he, he does that almost in every one. Yeah. Because he's like, all right, got the card. Oh, out of breath from chasing it. Mm-hmm. Like, he usually... He'll, he'll take a glass of water, like... and I've He been... stalls in every one, but I think there's one that's just him stalling. Yes. And 
it end with usually I think the highest I saw someone walk away with is a hundred and twenty seven dollars. Yeah, it's usually at worth less than the normal questions of the round. Yes, and you know it's a good bit. Yeah, it's a little rep- repetitive, but like by the second episode, you're like, "Ooh, what are they going to do this time?" And that's kind of fun. Yeah. Uh, it makes me wonder about the contestants. Because I remember one contestant's going like, get it, get it, the money. But like, no one seemed annoyed. Yeah. Like, everyone's just kind of like, <laughs> it's so silly, he sneezed and he lost the card. Oh, <laughs> so silly. I really wanted to see the contestant that was like, damn it, get it! <laughs> yeah. It's two million dollars! By this point, I like, I wondered what the contestants had and had not been coached on. They were clearly coached on the $2 million question. Yes. And for the record, at this time, I believe no one had won a million dollars on Millionaire. So the idea of a $2 million question is... Crazy. Yeah, absolutely astronomical. And But with Millionaire being so popular, the idea of... Oh, this game show is going to go to $2 million. Yeah, and that kind of works with that like, competitive... Yeah, so, uh, I don't remember when John Carpenter won the million dollars, but, uh... Uh, the first person... Nope, somebody won in 2000. In 2000? Yep. Okay. I I believe that would be John Carpenter. Um, no... I believe that's his name? Wait, I might be looking at the UK one. Hold on. Yeah, we're not talking about the UK... We're not talking about pounds! Whoa, easy... Easy. Your job on the show is research. My job on the show is to yell. It was John Carpenter, but it was 1999, so you're still wrong! What am I wrong about? I said it was John Carpenter. Yeah, but you said no one had won the million dollars yet in 2001 when the show, when You Don't Know Jack was airing. By that point, several people had won. Oh, okay. Well, I guess that proves the point more. That it was possible that but, people were like, "Oh, they're upping it now." Yeah, but fewer than ten people had won. Okay, that makes sense. We then break and we go into the third round. And again, uh, it was the first couple questions were three thousand dollars a piece, and two of them were regular trivia questions, and one was things that sound dirty but aren't. aren't. Yes, that was a re- reoccurring uh, question where they just used words that sounded filthy. But, all right. Yeah, they used, like, you know, some some dirty puns. Yeah, they had the one about photography. It's time now to play Things That Sound Dirty But Aren't. <laughs> For $2,000, which of these is not a photography term? Ball head. Soft box. Rear end exposure. Headshot. One thing I wanted to talk about real quick, now that we're into round three, is gameplay. Yes. Because uh, I love game shows, and I love games and like figuring out how they work. Yes. One thing that is really missing from You Don't Know Jack, the game show on TV versus the game show on the, the computer, is there's no penalty for a wrong answer. So I'm surprised that... There are times where people aren't just smashing their buzzer. And there are times where something is happening and it sounds like you hear them all hitting the button. Mm -hmm. Like you just hear the button just going. Because there's no penalty for it. Right. So I think something is lacking in the fact that you can just guess wildly and not suffer a consequence and win through luck. My, My thought with that is because this is a new game show and it's wacky... Was maybe the audience didn't know, or the audience, maybe the contestants didn't know that. And, like, with the universe they've built with this show, maybe something real bad happens to you if you're wrong. Yeah, they they could have done something more with that, too. Yeah. Just, like, a penalty for, you know, getting slimed or something goofy like that. Just, that that lack of penalty, I think, hurt the game. Okay. Uh, I think it needed... In uh, the You Don't Know Jack video games, there's a mechanic called the screw. Okay. In uh, yeah. multiplayer games. And I feel like this game needed that. I also kind of feel like the game would have worked better with four. 
Hmm. Why do you say it needs four? I, I don't know. Something about it just, like, I understand they kind of needed to go to two for the jack attack. But I thought it would be, would have been more interesting if, like, we lost, you know, somebody after round two, somebody after round three. I just find that to be an interesting mechanic in game shows. Okay. In yeah. general. I, I actually kind of thought that it should have just been head to head the whole time. I can see that too. I, I think three is a weird number. Three is a weird number. It's the Jeopardy number, so I think that's why so many game shows have three. Uh, but yeah, I think there's there's definitely some issues with uh, game theory in this show. Yeah, I mean uh, the Jack Attack does have penalties for incorrect answers. In that's game. true. They do bring it back at the in the the fourth round. Uh, and it should also be noted that they always mention what the losers will be leaving with. Yes. Things like that very old or uh, a year's supply of bubble gum. Yes, bubble gum, uh, pineapple. It's that very like old school consolation prize. Yes. And uh, then we have the big five thousand dollar question. These are hard. These are really hard questions. But they're really fun. Yes. Uh, the, they put up the no cheating blinders. Yeah, which are like grade school folders, essentially. Yes, yeah, so no one can cheat. And then they provide a mathematical equation to the contestants. Uh, Wikipedia has one, one of them by example. Sure. So do you want me to use that one or do you want to play a clip of Paul Rubens? Uh, read it, and if I can't find it... So, it's... For instance, the unit number on MASH added to the number of digits in a U.S. Social Security number minus the number of Beatles on the cover of the White Album, and the result is divided by the number represented by a roll of snake eyes. Give you a couple minutes to think about this. Because what they would do is they would give you 30 seconds as a contestant to solve this difficult math problem. And uh, Troy Stevens would always tell the crowd that they need exact... They need exact silence? Complete silence. Complete silence. Excuse me. Uh, They need complete silence uh, so that they can concentrate. Start the clock. And then whenever the clock would start, something very distracting would begin. Yeah, like a baby crying or a marching band. Marching band. Uh, the one that really got to me is uh, a bunch of barbers ran out and started cutting their hair. Yes. Now, they weren't really cutting the hair, but it was the feeling of buzzers against the back of your head. And then they would throw hair that looked like your hair. Oh, my God. That would, that would freak me out. <laughs> I, I think I would be pretty bummed, too. Especially since... And this is something they didn't start saying until later. Only the person with the most money gets to keep it. Yes. So the idea that it was like, I'm losing my hair and I might not win anything. Yeah, and like, they, I believe they did that in a heavily female episode. Yes. Because like, shaving a woman's hair is always kind of like considered way worse. Yes. So, uh, did you get the answer to that question? Did you, dear listener? What's the answer to that question, Laura? So, the unit number on MASH is uh, the four, uh, 4070? Yes. And then it, or the, four, the 4077th. Yes. Sorry. Uh, and then there's nine digits in a social security number. So that's, you know, 40, uh, 4086. Uh, minus the number of Beatles that appear on the White Album cover, which is how many? Which is zero. There's none none Beatles. of the Beatles are on that cover. It's just white. And then you divide that by two, and it's 2,043. Yes. And if you get this right, you win $5,000, and the person with the lowest amount of money... Is poorly CGI'd away. Yeah, usually explodes, which I thought was an odd uh, choice. It usually, like, has something to do with, like, a console... Like, usually has something to do with the consolation prize. Like, I think one, like, popped when it was the bubblegum. Yeah. So it was something that had to do with the consolation prize they were receiving. Yes. And then they got to move on to the Jack Attack, which was good to see the Jack Attack. Here in all of its glory. Yeah, and the Jack Attack, if you've never played a You Don't Know Jack game, 
Uh, it's the golden snitch. Yeah. It is, you can be behind the whole time and then pull up in the jack attack and wreck everybody. Yes, it's... Source, I do. In, in this version, uh, it's the standard jack attack of, uh, I will put up a word, uh, such as stew, and you need to find the next word that appears on screen that matches it according to the clue. Yeah. And the clue was, your name is stupid. Pick the last name that makes it, this name sound stupid. In this case, it was pit ass to make stupid ass. Yes. It's a wonderful, because it usually requires thinking that doesn't make a lot of sense. Yes. Uh, you know, I remember playing it and it was number of legs. You know, uh, how the correct number of legs for each number of things. It's like, oh, okay, well, this is easy. Mm-hmm. And the first one that came up that said, said an octopus baseball team. Oh. <laughs> oh, God, no. <laughs> yes, 72 would be correct. I'm right. <laughs> Sorry, Jack Attack is like my my weird nerd power. Um, so this one did have a penalty. If you did not succeed, you lost $5,000. So it, that did discourage the button mashing. Yes, because... If if not, because it's whoever buzzed in first, you could just bang on the button until yes. you won. So they do, like, they do manage to keep that one from getting in and... Yeah, the game theory makes sense there. Because that would be game-breaking. Yeah, exactly. If you just sit here and hit the button for no penalty. Uh, and... And there's usually about six questions. Yeah, something like that. And then at the end... This is another weird thing that changed throughout the show. In the first three episodes, it was, Cookie, what are the scores? And it was a very reflective to how the video game works, where you saw both players' scores pop up. Right. Towards the end, they only showed the winner's score. Okay. And it was very interesting to see this show where people were getting to the final round with $4,000, and then winning... $36,000. $36,000. Yes. So, like, you did make a decent chunk of change because of Jack Attack. I love Jack Attack. And the way the show would end is everyone that did a bit on the show would join uh, Troy Stevens on stage. Like the Ninjas, the Jack Russell Terrier, the marching band, Carl yeah. Lewis. Carl Lewis was there for one. Uh, they would all join him on stage and then Troy Stevens would look into the camera and say, and run towards the camera screaming, you don't know Jack, trying desperately not to turn into Pee Wee Herman. Something that he was successful in doing, I don't know, about 60% of the time. Everybody else, that's it for tonight. And if you think I'm not ending this show without saying you don't know Jack, then you don't know Jack! <laughs> So three out of, not not even three out of six episodes. <laughs> he didn't turn into Pee Wee Herman like twice. Yeah. He he tended to turn into Pee Wee Herman as he was running at the crowd. Well, there the was a couple camp. very Pee Wee Herman-esque things in that there was like the audience participation aspect. Oh yeah, because everyone screamed on the $2 million question, things like that. And there was a point where like the audience all starts throwing roses at Troy. Yeah. And every time they did the number question... The audience was clearly fed what the numbers were. Because he'd be like, and the number of Beatles in the White Album, they'd go, zero! That was another thing that changed. In the first couple episodes, they they had that, like, call and response. In the last three episodes, it's just Troy Stevens explaining it. Yeah, I think I'm just remembering the first couple. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's, like, it is repetitive. But I that's another thing that I thought was, like, odd. Uh, and then every th- episode ended with a Closing. Yeah. Like a, a stinger bit. Uh, for example, there's one episode where uh, Troy Stevens says, someone on this st- stage will be driving away in this new car. And the episode ends with him in the car. If you thought I wasn't going to take the car... Then you don't know, Jack. Uh, a little girl asks for a picture and Troy is really flattered, but she's asking for a picture with the Jack Russell Terrier that appeared in the episode. Yes. And then his fingers on the lens cap... 
of this like charming disposable camera from the early 2000s. This brings up a very interesting point I wanted to bring up. Yeah. Uh, there's an episode where they're giving away pineapple as the 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 constellation prize is like oh it's a year supply of pineapple. Right. And they throw to commercial and a producer walks up and says, Paul, what happened to the pineapple? You're supposed to give a year supply and you only gave them a few containers. And he says, I don't know anything about that. That episode ends with him going into his dressing room and when he cracks the door, it's full of pineapple. Okay. There's a star on his door that says... Paul Rubens. Right. In the episode with the Jack Russell Terrier, where he covers the lens, this happens outside his dressing room, and there's a star on it that says, Troy Stevens. It's really tonally confusing. So, my theory on this is, for some reason, halfway through filming... They said, oh, you're not Paul Rubens in this show. You're Troy Stevens. You're going to be a character. Yeah. And like, I don't know why that happened, but it, there's definitely something in there where there's all these references to him being called Paul that seem like accidents. And then him, them pushing, my name is Troy Stevens, over and over again, any time else. Yeah, and like it's very odd. It doesn't really like... It A lot of my complaint about the show is that it's tonally confusing. Yeah. Is that they, like, it doesn't quite know what it wants to be. Yeah, it, it's just kind of like a fun party. <laughs> so, yeah. So in the end, uh, you know, a couple people win some money. There's only six episodes here. Uh, what, what do you think of, of our host here, overall? Uh- um, so I, I have a theory with this because in my research, uh, Paul Rubens was attached to the project, left the project, and then came back. Oh, okay. And I believe he left and came back. Like, he didn't leave one day during filming and then come back. But, like, no one really knows what happened that he came back to the project. And I'm wondering if, like, he came up with his, like, new alter ego and wanted to play with it. That makes sense. That's that's totally a, a believable thing. I, I, part of me wonders if it's, you know, we were in our, you know, late childhood, early teens when this show came out. Late yeah. childhood. So we never really knew Pee Wee Herman as anything more than, like, we knew about the scandal. Right. So this, it might have been him trying to, like, distance himself slightly, because a lot of what he had done was, like, voice work or smaller parts in other shows uh, that kids weren't necessarily watching. So this was his first, like, kind of family-oriented project with his face attached to it in a Mm -hmm. while. So I'm wondering if, like, that's part of the reason for the name. Uh, He plays a good, smarmy creep. Right. Which I think is also a clear... Uh, choice to get away from Pee Wee. Yes. Because Pee Wee is unnerving to some people, but he's not smarmy. Yeah. He's unnerving in the other direction. He's so innocent and so... Yeah, he's naive. A childlike. Yeah. This one, this, Troy Stevens is cunning. He's Leisure Suit Larry. Like, yes. Almost literally with the leisure suit. And I have to know... When did this air? This aired for five weeks on Wednesdays at 8 p.m. in the summer of 2001. Okay. Like June, July. I think that might be part of the problem. Because if it's coming on Wednesday at 8 p.m., that means the lead-in is is Jeopardy and Wheel of Fortune. Yeah. So to have the audience of, oh, I like game shows, and then... Oh, a new game show. And you get the Wheel Watchers now watching You Don't Know Jack, which is flashing colors and wackiness. 
the feeling of like this isn't a game show. And Troy Stevens and uh, there is a Vanna White type character. She doesn't do a lot. No, she certainly does not. But there is a uh, there is a model Jackie, I believe her name is. Yeah, she is there just for the joke. Uh, that is my favorite model, and the car's nice too. But she does appear in other episodes. Yeah, and I don't think she says much, no, if she, ever speaks. She does very little. But they're kind of a clear deconstruction of Pat Say Jack and Vanna White. Yeah. So the Wheel Watchers may not have taken super kindly to that. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, they might have not liked that. Because Pat Say Jack still kind of dresses like it's 1970, and so does. Troy Stevens, and, you know, the model has that higher the hair, closer to God look that, you know, Vanna White kind of exemplified for a while. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, any other things you found in your research before we, we give this a verdict? Reviews were uh, mostly negative. Oh, they really? did not really enjoy... Uh, they did not really enjoy the show. Entertainment Weekly called it terrible. People Magazine panned it. Um, it was supposed to... I'm guessing it was going to get picked up for a longer run if this initial run did well. Mm -hmm. But it was canceled because of low ratings. People thought it was weird. People just didn't enjoy it. Okay. Alright. So. We've watched this whole series. Yes. We've played the games. Oh, they aired episodes back to back on the first week. Because it was six episodes over five weeks. Oh, so you got an hour of it. I think that damaged it significantly. You think? This show is... Half-hour game shows are very repetitive. Okay. And when you're watching them... To watch them in a marathon form is best if you're doing something else. Like, I know there have been times I've left Game Show Network on... Right. And it's been, like, Lingo or The Chase. And I'm cleaning the house or playing a video game on, like, my game, my DS, and I'm not paying close attention. This show doesn't quite work the same way. And yeah. a premiere in primetime, I don't think any sh primetime game show benefits from two episodes in a row. I'm, I'm going to disagree, just because we are in prime who wants to be a millionaire time. Which I believe ran for an hour in prime time. But it ran one episode in an hour. Right. I, I get you there. Uh, what I'm saying is having it be back to back, regardless of the length. If all right. one episode of You Don't Know Jack was an hour long, I would not feel the same way. Okay, okay. But the fact that it's back to back, so it's around, you see the entire thing and then you, you reset see it again. And do it again. And I think that's where it runs into problems. Yeah. I mean, I think right now... And the bits are so repetitive. If the second episode was wildly different from the first, it might have worked out, but like... The, yeah, the, the bits are similar. The, too much of it is repeated. Yeah. I think this is prime like game show time in prime time. Like, yes. But by this point, I believe Greed is running on Fox. And while that was never like a juggernaut, the idea of like... Everyone jumping on this uh, who wants to be a millionaire train. Uh, while I agree that for the most part, game shows are best enjoyed while doing something else. At this time, game shows were appointment television. Because it was like, who will be the first to win a million dollars? No, no, I'm not saying that game shows are uh, best when they're being ignored. I'm saying repetitive yeah. More than one episode in a row of the same game show. Doesn't work. Like, it's one thing to sit down and watch Millionaire. Mm -hmm. Millionaire is also easier to kind of play along with. In a yeah. way you don't know Jack does yeah, not Yeah, this play was well. not... Th there was a lot of, like, insider stuff here. I mean, these long-running game shows kind of all have that in common. Jeopardy, Wheel of Fortune, and Millionaire all had that, like... You could kind of play along at home. Yeah, I could. I could win this. I could be on this. The idea of watching a game show, sitting at home, and being like, "Well, nobody ever wins," doesn't have that same appeal of like. There's not daydreams about this game show. No, because it plays to your skill set. Uh, so yeah, that that's another like major element of this show, uh, or or shortcoming of this show. 
Uh, so, final verdict. What do you think? Should this stay tuned or should this stay doomed? I think in Year of Our Lord 2018, this is a stay tuned. Okay. Because I think this is the kind of show that would do really well on, like, a YouTube or a Netflix. Okay. I think that this show was, in a way, ahead of its time. Mm-hmm. I think, I mean, there's no, there's more to the show than, like, BuzzFeed's Um Actually. Yeah, that makes sense. And this is the kind of, like... Um, actually, that's college humor. Oh, whatever. They're essentially the same thing. <laughs> um, they are not easily differentiated. So, I lost my whole train of thought because he had to be a nerd. <laughs> um, it, it's very similar in that style and would work on a, a YouTube format. Yeah, it's that wacky, weird, bite-sized. Because I think You Don't Know Jack would actually work better, shorter. Yeah. And uh, as someone who watched it live, Mm -hmm. because I was a huge fan of the video game and a big fan of Pee Wee Herman, this is 100% a stay doomed for me. Ooh. Because we sat here and we watched it in a marathon and it was like super fun. Yeah. It was fun and enjoyable and stuff like that. When this aired on television... It was such a slog because of the commercials. And another thing to talk about with the the time slot, this came on at 8 o'clock. At 7 o'clock, the same audience roughly would have watched Jeopardy. In the course of Jeopardy, you get, what, 100 questions? Not that many, but it's you get a, at it's least... It's a 5 by 5 grid. Twice. Twice. So that's 50. That's 50. And then, and like, then Final Jeopardy. Yeah, so 51. You get, you get 51 questions. This one you get like 12. And you don't know, Jack, you get three questions and then a commercial. Yes. And as someone who loves game shows and loves trivia, it was frustrating to be like, all right, we're going to commercial. Let's check the scores. Well, Greg's ahead with $2,000 and the other two haven't answered a question yet. I, I agree. There's a lot of wasted time in a given episode of You Don't Know Jack. And I 100% think this show would do well on a YouTube. Yes. Like, I think the format this exists on didn't... Like, the format this would work best on didn't exist yet. Yeah. And there's one thing that happens in this show that to me is complete insanity. That I... Like, when I saw this happen live blew my mind and upset me as a fan of game shows. Okay. During the $5,000 question, they have to answer that math question, and a mariachi band comes out. Yes. Mariachi band plays for 30 seconds, and uh, Troy Stevens is trying to talk, and the mariachi band, like, surrounds him. And he goes, oh, I get it. And he reaches into his pocket, and he gives him $300. And the leader says, gracias. And Troy Stevens says, don't thank me, thank our contestants. And then all the contestants lose $100. For no reason. Yeah. Like, if I was on that show, I would lose my mind. Yeah, like, it's really, it's, this seems like a tough show to be part of. Like, and I get it's a joke, I get all of that, but... They go out of their way every episode to say this is a real contest for real money. And I understand that it doesn't change the ranking. Like, no one got an advantage of that. It's just whoever's going to win is going to not win on an extra $100 for no reason. Hey, screw you. And there's the screw. (laughs) Yeah, so that one moment really upset me as a game show fan. Yeah, it, like I said, the show is tonally weird. And I think not for nothing, it's a summer game show that ran Wednesdays at 8 o'clock in June and July. What does it look like outside at 8 o'clock on Wednesday in June and July? That's nice. It's nice out. Still light out? Yeah. Would like, you know, 9, 10, 11 year olds who this show would be really good for still be outside? Yeah, or they're probably playing. Still be out doing a thing? Yeah. Enjoying life. So I think a lot of 
Because when you get to that, like, they're yelling pee and poo, I was like, this is a little infantile. This is kind of meant for that, like... Like, I could see your family watching this when you were, like, 10 or 11, 12. Your sister would have been 7, 8. Mm -hmm. So it would have been a good, like... The kids are a little older and can enjoy this, like, slightly naughty game show with their parents. Yes. My parents hated this. Oh, I'm not surprised knowing your family. Because but... I remember uh, we watched it when it first came on. And in like the next couple weeks, we weren't watching it. So I had to go into another room and watch it on the bad TV. Oh, not the bad. That's such a like 90s and 80s phenomenon now. Yeah. The bad TV. Yeah. Because when I said that, everyone over the age of 20 thought of the bad TV. Yeah, yeah, it was a tube TV. Like the color wasn't great. The screen was smaller than your the laptop screen. Uh, cuz I'm thinking of at my grandmother's house. There was the bad TV and that's what I was allowed to watch Snick on. Yeah. I like have strong memories of watching all that on the bad TV cuz mm. I didn't want to watch like whatever Richard Gere movie my family was watching. Yeah. So for me it's a stay doomed. I think you're on to something. In having it be 15 minute shorts online. Absolutely. I think this show would do really well that way. And you could lean so much harder into the Paul Rubens, Troy Stevens stuff with that. Yeah. And I also think it would do well not being on television where, like, uncensored. Being uncensored on the internet, I think, would help this show a lot. Yeah, like, if you could have thrown a couple, like, real swear words in there, I think that would have been, like... And not being beholden to sponsors as much. Because when you think about, like, Jackbox, what's your favorite joke ad from Jackbox? Uh, my, my absolute favorite is predatory loans. Really hope you don't read the fine print. So are you going to be able to have a predatory loans joke ad when a bunch of your sponsors are, say, banks? Yeah. I think this show would have been a lot better with fake commercials. Yeah, I think that would have been... The show feels like a good idea done poorly. Yeah. That, um, if you want to experience the fun of this show, go watch Distraction. Distraction is a better version of this. It's, you know, it's all the jokes. It's all the kind of like rough on the, the contestants type stuff. But it's more of a game show. Yeah, so I... I'm going to go in the stay tuned because it's 2018 and there's a format it would work on now. And yeah. you're going to go with stay doomed because you're still mad. Because I'm love still it. mad at that at the missed opportunity that this show was. Okay. So, uh, about that time. Yes, it is. For the Jack Attack! Oh, no! Now I win. So what are we watching next week? Uh, next week, uh, I wanted... To do a whole month on just the Sci-Fi Channel, but uh, got shot down because those shows are long. But also, some of them are scary. There is a fantastic game show that once again I watched all of it live, uh, and that show is called Chase with a dollar sign over the H. It's a live-action video game. Guys. A dollar sign over the H. Over the S. Oh. Over the S. That's what dollars are. So like Nick Arcade. No. <laughs> Nothing like Nick Arcade. Not like Nick Arcade. Okay. But that's... No? Oh, uh, I can't... Uh, I love this I, show. I, I know don't... nothing about this show going in. Yeah. It's it's high stakes tag. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, next week we're going to be watching Chase on uh, the Aerodon... The Sci-Fi Network, so I don't think it was Seafy yet. It wasn't Seafy yet. Uh, I know nothing about it, so that's going to be what we're doing after this. And uh, just a quick reminder that this is, in fact, a five-Monday month. What, what, what? And on the fifth Monday, we like to do something a little bit special. Uh, that's why we did Cry Baby Lane back in October. Not sure what we're going to do this month. So if you have an idea, how can they reach out to us? If you have an idea that is somehow, some way, tangentially related to game shows, uh, 
Email us at thestaydoomedshow at gmail.com or Twitter or Facebook at Stay Doomed. And if you want to send me your gibberish questions, I am at TV's Noah on Twitter. If you for some reason think you could take me on an a jack attack, I'm at Priorities. Until next time, stay doomed. <laughs>